Okay, so I'd like to start the curriculum and instruction meeting for August 7th. It is 6.50 p.m. In attendance are myself. Kristen Thompson. Tom Angela Owens. Okay. Um, on our agenda, the first item is the integrated learning update. So this is all right. I will let you know I'm going to pass out some papers. Uh-huh. So talk about the integrated learning and talk about the other item on the agenda. Yep. The live stream. Mm-hmm. And give a little bit of background, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Wilkins. Okay. All right. I'll let you hand out the papers first, and then we'll start the call here. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So by going down this path, 
We've been talking a lot about different learning management systems, LMSs for short. Uh, the teachers in grades 7 through 12 have been utilizing Schoology. It's a platform that they've used. It's robust. It's, it's used in many, many school districts. It's a quality product. Our teachers and, and parents are familiar with it and uh, familiar with how to utilize it. However, um, Blackboard is another learning management uh, tool that provided additional supports when students are working asynchronously. If we are not moving down this model for asynchronous instruction, then it would be my recommendation that we do not move forward with transitioning um, our learning management system. And a little side note is, right now Blackboard is having a big problem connecting to Infinite Campus, our SIS, our student information system, where we house everything, all student records. So a model I would like to propose we investigate as part of the strategic planning process is a model that I have seen effectively implemented at Brandywine Heights. I bring that up because Brandywine Heights, one of the strongest things that we had in place there was our virtual academy. Our virtual academy was ranked number one in all of Pennsylvania for the effectiveness that we had with our students. There are many lessons that we learned over the past 15 years utilizing our virtual academy that would be an easy copy-paste here with an honor environment. We have a number of students that are not enrolled within Daniel Boone Area School District. They're enrolled in PA Cyber Charter and other Cyber Charter programs. To effectively win those students back into our school district, where we can provide a, a greater level of uh, instruction at a significantly reduced rate of cost to the district, um, I would like to strongly move forward with investigating this alternate virtual academy instruction. You need somebody at the helm that's actively going out, meeting with these families, and supporting students while they're in a virtual academy model like this. And then when students are struggling, as students will struggle in virtual environments, then we have options of bringing those students in and working with that teacher that's in charge of the virtual academy. Um, so long and, and, and short of this, I 100% understand and respect the vision of where this was originally going. I would highly recommend that we hit pause on transitioning to this model as I have seen, and maybe Mrs. Owens can feel free to interject, um, I do not believe our teachers are ready for this transition. Not only are they not comfortable and familiar with the new learning management system, but then their curriculum has not been adjusted, modified, and fully developed enough to offer those courses asynchronously yet. The goal has been to get there, but I can tell you, they are not there yet. Mrs. Owens, anything to interject on that? We didn't get a chance to collaborate with each other, a lot of people, and there has been a great effort to go towards this vision of having our in-house uh, virtual learning. Um, it's just, you know, when we look at our numbers, and as of next year, it looks like we have about 23 uh, students in our place of virtual academy, about 7 through 12. Um, at the middle school, we're looking at maybe two. And at my high school, about 21. So um, I think the, the best move forward is, is to, again, maybe a little bit more robust and have somebody at the helm eventually and bring, so we'll continue to bring people back from, from the virtual academies that are not part of the neighborhood. Um, but going forward this way, I think, is a wise move right now. And one other thing I would like to also add is. I think it's important to continually look at this through the lens of a parent. And if we're not doing that, what we end up with is K and 1, our teachers are primarily communicating with our parents via Seesaw. The Seesaw app, that's great at the primary uh, level. But then, this model that's currently the direction that we're headed 
is Schoology would still be utilized for students in grades two through four, and then uh, grades no two through six. I believe, right? I thought it was two through two through six, and then seven through twelve would then be Blackboard. So if I'm a parent and I have mm -hmm. three students spread across primary, intermediate, and high school, now I, as a parent, have three different learning management systems that I am also then responsible, as a responsible parent, to monitor and support my, my child or children with. So I want to do as much streamlining as humanly possible so it's not an added burden to our parents. This model that I'm recommending would be, uh, we'd still have Seesaw in K-1, but then it would be Schoology grades two through 12. So it minimizes the, the additional resources that our parents would also have to learn. So that's what I'm kind of bringing to the table right now. And I do not want to say that we are not moving forward in this direction, but I want to say I'd like to hit pause on this and really vet it through um, the strategic planning process to make sure that we're headed in the right direction. So last year, I, I was in that situation. All four of my kids were using four different ones. Um, so are we, being, are we getting rid of Blackboard altogether? Or, or? It, this model would result essentially in Blackboard going away for this year. And so. I think my fourth grader was like on Google Classroom or something. And yeah, Google Classroom is also going to be gone. You know, it would be, um, we have the Intermediate Center getting trained on Schoology right now uh, because that was the plan for them to transition over to Schoology for this next year. Um, and then instead of grades 7 through 12 moving forward with Blackboard, we'd say stay with Schoology. And then, okay, so, okay, I just want to make sure I understand this. So, so 7 through 12 will be Schoology. And also, also four through six. Yes. So four through twelve, Schoology. Correct. And what's? Second, two, I'm sorry. Two, second through two, two through, 12. through twelve. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Just, I've grades. been. I've had. Well, I have. A, I had a kid in every one, so I've done them all. I don't remember what they're on, but yeah. so two through twelve will be the same, and then K and one still, still there, seesaw. seesaw. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, but back to this BBA. Um, and so, are these parents? Do, I mean. Close to the beginning of the school year, do they know what that you guys are pausing in, and now uh, they have so, to find a different? We drug the communication about moving to this integrated model, so they essentially did not know that we were shifting going to this new model. So we have been in touch with uh, the students that are in the virtual academy model. Mrs. Owens has been working hard to make sure that we have the uh, proper ingenuity courses in place for them. But essentially, parents were not aware that things were going to be completely changing. And have, has anybody talked to these parents to find out why they are putting their kids in, in virtually anyway? Because like, the majority of parents that I've talked to is because they found out during COVID that their kid wasn't getting bullied anymore and they liked that and they didn't want to send them back. And uh -huh. if we can work on that bullying with the, the dean of students or whatever that is at the middle school, like, sure. maybe that'll bring students because we all know, like, in-person education is the best. Oh. Yeah, she can't hear you, so. Oh, sorry. If you think you have yeah, it, actually, I don't even know if your microphone's working. Oh, well, that's... Yeah, I have it on. on. Now? Yeah. What, what, what number are you? 90. 90? Or 09, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Six? <laughs> Something? <laughs> 6, 60? 06? <laughs> try, try now. Is that, is that on? Hello? Oh, that's on. Here we go. Okay. So, so the, the question was essentially, um, do we know root cause analysis why those students are in the virtual model and not uh, just in person like everybody else? Yeah, I, mean, I think it's all. Oh my gosh. I think it's all of the above. It's all those reasons here. It can be anything from student traveling to North Carolina being a, a certain school for a Um, but the whole idea too is that whatever reason it is, it would be 
nice for us to find that out and see the new families to see if we can get them to come back, if not in person, at least come back to our virtual academy. So, so pending your support, what I would uh, like to do essentially is in my welcome back letter to our teachers and our staff that, that I'll be sending out tomorrow, uh, my plan, because I think it's important to, to make sure that we take teacher uh, feedback into consideration. I like making decisions that are rooted in data, um, not just assumptions. So I would like to put out a survey to our teachers that essentially says, if we have the option to do Blackboard or Schoology, tell me where you are. And um, if my informal uh, assessment of the situation is correct, we will end up with 90 plus percent of our teachers that would prefer to stay with Schoology. Uh, but again, before we make a final decision, I, I do want to have that, that piece of information. So that's what I would like to do moving forward. Uh, but I do want to make sure, because I, I know before I got here, there was a lot of uh, work and conversation regarding integrated learning. So I, I, I really hate changing direction before seeing things in, in action, but this I do foresee as a little bit of a train wreck. Um, and I, I don't want that to happen. Okay. So that's integrated learning. Shifting gears a little bit, um, we do have a uh, live stream that I'd like to review with everybody. It is imperative for us as we're moving forward as a school district to remain nimble and flexible and adaptable to whatever, uh, whatever types of situations that our, our students are finding themselves in. We do recognize that we are competing with other educational institutions nowadays, whether that is private school, charter school, cyber charter school, um, there are a lot of different options that are available. Um, that being said, once again, we do recognize the importance of in-person instruction. We want to focus almost all of our efforts at make, making sure that, that we improve our pedagogy with our teachers and really focus on how we're working with those students in front of us. Um, how are we grouping them? How are we remediating? How are we enriching those learning opportunities? How do we connect those lessons to reality, connected to student interests? That is a lot of work to do it well. Um, and that's where we want to focus our efforts. If we continue to say that if any student at any time wants to just log on and live stream lessons, what essentially we're doing, without truly doing it, is we're encouraging more lecture-based uh, instruction because that's the easiest way to make sure that students that are live streaming stay connected, without a doubt. So if I'm a teacher and I have a student that uh, is, is connected to my class via the live stream link, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk the whole time and my class that's in front of me, they're gonna listen, and a student that's uh, connected remotely is going to listen. But we know that there's a time and a place for direct instruction, but it should not be all day, every single period. Um, we want to make sure that our students have time to collaborate, to work on projects together, and those lessons don't live stream well at all. It takes prior planning on the teacher's part to make sure that that live streaming lesson is done effectively. So to make that happen, there has to be some level of communication between home and the school. We're not saying that live streaming is a bad thing or going away, but what we're saying is that it's not just going to be a link that anybody can click at any time and cameras are on 24 7. I don't think that's an effective way to utilize the amazing technology that, that we have in the classrooms. Um, I believe best practice is wrapped around it between home and school, um, and, and we've been in, in talks about what that process looks like to streamline that as much as possible, um, but we do want some type of proactive communication that's, that's going on. If there is a student that is sick, we want them to also be able to be sick. I think that's important. You don't always have to connect 24-7 just because you can. But if I'm a student that just had, this is the, the example I use all the time because it's the only thing I can think of. You're uh, 
appendix through, and you're feeling up to it, and you don't want to fall behind, you have that option afforded to you. Because you can plan ahead for these things, reach out, and we'll make sure that if you want to live stream, you're going to be able to live stream. Um, but the concept of it just eternally being on for any time anyone wants to jump on, I, I think that that creates problems instructionally, and also it's a little bit more nuanced, but on the attendance side of things as well. And so uh, for all of those reasons, I would like to recommend that we shift, not significantly, but the, the way that we're looking to, to incorporate live streaming within our classrooms, uh, because up until now, uh, I believe that the, the plan was the camera's just always on all the time. And I'd like to say as a teacher that I wholeheartedly support that decision, and I would even go so far as to go even further than you, because <laughs> I don't like it at all. Um, but I think that after having taught uh, virtually for two, two and a half years, um, I, when someone is live streaming you, you change your lesson. It's not how you teach. You sit there and you lecture the whole time, because it's too much trouble to do what you would actually do, and then everyone in the class suffers. So I think, you know, in an extreme situation when someone's sick, okay, but at the same time, like, if someone's gonna be, like, live streaming my class all day, it's gonna be black and white, A to Z, and we're done. Like, it's not gonna, it thwarts the teacher's creativity, absolutely, no matter how much planning you put into it. I, I completely agree, I've seen that too, also as a, the husband of a, of a teacher still, I, I've mm -hmm. seen everything that, that she's been trying to do. Uh, every single day, and it's, it's very difficult. And um, again, if we want to put our eggs in one basket, it's we want to make sure that we're focused on the students that are in front of us. That's okay. where we have to back to the above. Absolutely. So those were the, the two big uh, instructional things that I wanted to make sure that we were on the same page uh, with. So, is there anything else? I don't know anything else. Thanks for letting me interject. I really want to talk about those things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Is there anybody else with a good applause? All right. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Um, then we will conclude the curriculum and instruction meeting at 7.13 p.m.